OK, so ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, I want to go through this as kind of as quickly as possible as I can. Is there a problem? Oh, no, you're good? OK. So the main important thing is I want you guys to understand. First thing we're talking about is understanding standard form, vertex form. You guys can see this is a quadratic that is in standard form. The reason why it's in standard form, it's in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. Well, guess what? We want to convert this over to a times x minus h. Can you please stop that? Plus k. OK? We need to convert it from this to this. What I want you guys to understand is look at how are we going to do this. What I want you guys to see is this, is, this x is squared, whereas this x is inside a, is with an expression that's being squared. So basically, what we need to do is we need to create an expression that can be squared. I'm going to move a little bit fast. I'm going to move a little forward with this. So what we need to do is we need to create an expression that we can factor down to something being squared. If you guys remember, when we were factoring binomial squared, or trinomials, perfect square trinomials, perfect square trinomials factored to binomial squareds. I'll explain it here in just a second. So first step that you guys are going to do, first step is you're going to group your quadratic and linear terms. So the quadratic term is the term raised to the second power. Your linear term is the x raised to the first power. You're going to group them. That's all you do. Just write little parentheses around the first two terms. It's that easy. Step number two, factor so a is equal to 1. Now, I didn't say factor out GCF. All I said was factor out term so a is equal to 1. In this case, is my a still equal to 1? Yeah. yeah, so I can skip number 1. But we're going to do 1 like that next. Step number three, create the perfect square trinomial. 25. Correct. Now, how did you do that? Where did that come from? That comes from b divided by 2 squared. So what you're simply going to do is do b divided by 2 and then square it. Huh? What, to the other side? Because we're not trying to solve it in this case. Oh, we're, just trying we're just trying to rewrite it into this form. So I want that 3 is going to be a part of my k. So I'm going to leave it there. Okay. So now I have 10 divided by 2 and square it. Please follow the order of operations. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. Now I add, add and subtract. Okay, so I'm going to have y equals x squared plus 10x plus 25 plus 3 minus 25. Does everybody have any questions on why I added and I subtracted? Yes, there are no. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sure. So if I had an equation, x plus 5 equals 10. And I said I wanted to solve. And you say, oh, well, you need to isolate x. So you'd subtract 5 on both sides. Now, oh, can I that real, please? Sorry. Um, so if you guys were thinking about this, you subtract on both sides, right? The reason why you subtract on both sides is called the properties of equality. Whatever you do on one side, you have to do on the other side. Well, let's say, we, so whatever, what I want you to understand is, by subtracting on the, same, on the same side, that produces equivalent equations, correct? OK. Well, what if I had another equation? x equals x. You guys agree with me? That's correct, right? Well, if I did x plus 1, what would I have to do? What I would also have to do on the side to still make it equal to x? Minus 1. Do you guys agree with me that these are equivalent equations? So as long as you either subtract on both sides, which talking about, you were talking about subtracting the 3. You could subtract the 3 on both sides. Or as long as you add and subtract, you keep the function the same, equivalent functions, equations. Yes? Why do you subtract 1? Why don't you add 1 to the other side? Because what I'm saying is this is the same thing. Subtracting a 5 on both sides or adding and subtracting, they both produce equivalent equations. It's just this isn't related to this. It was just a way to explain it. So. I added and subtracted, because you got because remember guys, the function equals this, right? That's what the function equals. So you can't just like change the value of the function by adding a number. 
If you're going to add a number, you've got to subtract that number. But the important thing is we added one of them inside the parentheses, and we subtracted one outside. Now, why do we add it inside? Because as I mentioned, that creates a perfect square trinomial, which if you guys remember, in our focus lesson, we talked about factoring perfect square trinomials. Whenever the first term and the last term are square numbers, you can factor that where the factors will be exactly the same. What two numbers multiply to give you a positive 25, add to give you a 10? 5. So it's x plus 5 times x plus 5, or y equals x plus 5 squared minus 22. So now I can say my vertex is going to be at h comma k, which I, I erased, right? Negative 5, negative 20. Very good. Make sure it's the opposite. Remember, it's x minus h, correct? So if that's plus, it's opposite. So it's negative 5. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative 5. My domain, in this case, all domains for all quadratics are always going to be all real numbers. All real numbers. Now my range, if you guys look at this graph, my range goes from 0 to infinity. But now what has happened? My vertex has now moved this graph five units to the left because the vertex was at 0, 0. Now the vertex has been moved five units to the left and down 22. So what's the lowest that the graph goes down to now? Negative 22. So the range is now negative 22 comma infinity. Okay. And that's basically the hardest part that you guys will have to do 